Hello everyone. Today we have Sridhar Manta with us. He is the CEO of Generative AI Business Unit and it's a great honor to have him with us and to share his insights on what's happening in the Generative AI business space. So Sridhar, tell us what are the Generative AI myths, realities and business applications? Yep. So if you look at the Generative AI, it is natural evolution of AI with very focused technology around AI. So that way the excitement is extremely high at this point in time on what is the potential of it and ChatGPT very clearly demonstrated on what it can do. So naturally there's a lot of excitement on what all the things it can do and there are certain hyperboles like um, AGI or artificial general intelligence and all the human intelligence can be replaced with uh, generative AI kind of technologies. However, that is really far at this point in time, even though there could be a small probability of something like that can happen in many, many years. So that way we need to look at what it can do today and how it can actually optimize the businesses and what value it can add to the businesses and their end customers. And we need to design the solutions, keeping the today's technology and what is possible in the near future. So Sridhar, why is generative AI not another metaverse or Web3? When it comes to metaverse especially, it is heavily reliant upon the hardware. At that point in time, the expectation is people will be having something as simple as glasses or cooling glasses and we just wear it and we can actually converse and stay within the metaverse. However, such hardware revolutions generally don't happen very quickly. Very similarly, when it comes to generate UA, there also there was a strong need for hardware and the same was happened through NVIDIA and other uh, giants and we could get very powerful server that can crawl through the entire internet or trillions of tokens and create large language models. So that way the hardware is here. And the second thing is A is already existing and a proven technology and we are adding something on the top of it. And third and the last thing is we are not expecting fundamental shifts in the user behavior which was required with metaverse. So the users continue to chat, users continues to talk, and the same way the interfaces and the solutions can be designed. Since we are not expecting the users to drastically change their behavior, and a massive killer use case is demonstrated through chat GPT, we do believe that the generative AI has very, very good potential. However, the predictions are predictions. So Sridhar, what kick-started the creation of generative AI business unit at Happiest Minds? Happiest Minds, historically, from the inception, 12 years back, we created a uh, focus on uh, artificial intelligence and analytics, and we have a very strong and powerful analytics center of excellence at this point in time. And we have been working with generative AI, transform uh, architectures or decoder models, et cetera, for the last three years. But looking at the kind of importance generative AI has, as an organization, we decided that we need to heavily specialize and focus on generative AI. And Happiest Minds always is structured as business units and by creating a new business unit around generative AI, we felt and the management and the board also felt that we actually can give the kind of attention and focus that generative AI requires both from the engineering technology, solution development and domain intersection and sales and helping our customers ultimately. And that is a genesis for generative AI and we build on the top of AI capabilities, generative AI capabilities historically we built and very strong competence in the digital platform development and digital transformation with Generative AI leading the solutions. Tell me, Sridhar, how will Generative AI change the people skill requirements? This is a little difficult to predict at this point in time because we are seeing at this point in time tip of the iceberg when it comes to Generative AI. So that way, the early stages of Generative AI heavily is around very few APIs of ChatGPT or prompt engineering kind of technologies, which are relatively easier for people to understand and learn. However, as we move towards more complicated solutions and non-language kind of models, like images, 2D and 3D worlds, CAD designs, etc., and more and more open source frameworks and uh, large language models come out, the skill requirements will get into specialization very quickly. So that way, most of the engineers at this point in time need to understand what generative AI is, what large language models are, minimum understanding about prompt engineering is required in their day-to-day -day lives, and it could be using more of uh, development or testing. 
that they do with the help of Generate AI. However, as time progresses, very quickly we move towards specialization around the tool vendors or core technologies or even the domain specialization also. So Sridhar, tell me, if you were a generative AI engineer, what would be the most interesting application of this technology? So at this point in time, the most interesting applications we can develop is trying to push the boundaries of what generative AI can do. Of course, all of us can understand at this point in time, there are two or three typical solutions many of us dabble with. For example, we take custom documents or knowledge repositories and try to converse against it be it for customer support or IT internal chatbots, etc. However, more interesting applications are coming on the horizon. And uh, as an example, if you take healthcare, genome sequencing, and trying to treat the DNA sequences like a language and trying to fine tune foundational models so that in the drug discovery generative AI can help. And uh, this is a problem that personally I'm really very, very excited about because it fundamentally can accelerate the drug development and has the potential to help broader humanity in an immense way. Thank you so much, Sridhar, for being here with us and sharing your insights on what's happening in this interesting space of generative AI. Stay tuned, we'll come back with more information from other leaders from generative AI business services.